Welcome to Douglas County News Exchange. I'm your host, Sabrina Hayes. It's the middle of summer and we've got things for you to do and things that you will want to know about, including what's going on with the Bleakley Building on Fairburn Road, some new signage at all of our butterfly gardens, and a new way to learn about what our rideshare program has to offer. All of this and more today on Douglas County News Exchange. First up is a look at a new, more convenient way to learn about all of the programs that our Douglas County Rideshare has to offer the citizens of Douglas County. Here's Director Gary Watson with the details. Hey there, I'm Gary Watson, Director of Multimodal Transportation Services and the Rideshare Program for Douglas County. We have a number of transportation mobility programs to assist the residents of Douglas County as they try to get to work, the doctor, the pharmacy, and other locations that are important to, in their, their daily lives. Some of the things that we do offer is we have a van pool service that takes people to work locations throughout Atlanta. We have express bus service that goes to downtown and midtown Atlanta Monday through Friday. We also have a voucher program to aid senior citizens and disabled individuals in their day-to-day -day activities. And we're really excited to announce also that in early 2018, we're going to have fixed route bus service uh, inside Douglas County that will help you to get from A to B. Um, inside the county. For instance, uh, if you live somewhere up in the old downtown part of Dugsville and you need to, to get to somewhere down on Chapel Hill Road, we'll have bus service uh, that will help you to do that. We're very proud of all the services that we offer. A problem that we've had down through the years though is that so many people are not aware of our services. Uh, they don't know what we do. They don't know where we are. Uh, we have a magnificent transportation center behind the courthouse that's one of a kind in the metro area, and yet few people visit us because they don't know that we're there. Uh, we try to, a number of things to get the word out, uh, hoping to, to get more people involved in our program. And one way we want to do that, one way we want to get the word around is using devices like this kiosk that we have here in the Douglas County Courthouse. Uh, this is a self-contained device that has information about all of our programs that you can get with the touch of a finger. It talks about the Bamboo program, the voucher program, uh, the bus program, the express bus service, and other programs that we might offer uh, in the future. And the key to this is it just gives basic information. We want you to get just enough information from this to where it will make you want to call us or come by and see us to where you can get more information uh, on our programs. Uh, we've got this in the courthouse now. It's sort of a pilot project. We want to see how many people use the kiosk, how many people it, it attracts, and how many uh, calls or visits it generates for us. Once we see how this works, if it's successful, uh, we plan on purchasing some more and putting them in major uh, work or retail centers. Uh, for instance, some of the, the warehouse and distribution locations up on Thornton Road, Riverside Parkway, uh, where they have employees who have difficulty uh, getting to work. Uh, we plan to put some of the kiosks up there to where they can see about our services and maybe we can do something to, to assist them in getting to work on a day-to-day -day, uh, basis. If you're in the courthouse, we invite you to come by and take a look at this. Very, very simple to operate. Got a lot of good information on it. And hopefully, once you do that, um, you'll come and see us at the Douglas County Transportation Center, 8800 Doris Road. Uh, right behind the courthouse. And by all means, if you have a transportation issue, uh, getting to work, 
getting the important appointments, uh, get in touch with us. We'll try our very best uh, to help you out with that. Have you ever seen a plant in a garden that you really loved but didn't know what it was called? That makes it difficult to include that particular type of plant in your own garden. The Master Gardeners of Douglas County took this into consideration recently and have added signage to the plants included in each of our local butterfly trail gardens. Here's Marjorie Stansel with more information about this new addition. We're in downtown Douglasville at the 8th Garden on the Butterfly Trail, the Douglas County Butterfly Trail. This garden was completed in April of this year with funds from Comcast and about 30 volunteers. We built this garden in one day and have added plants to it since then. Uh, we still have a other, few other things to do, but essentially the garden is up, it's blooming. And now all of the plants within the garden are marked with these special labels that we have. One label is for host plants. It's a larger label and it says host plant and the name of the, the butterfly uh, picture on the label. And the other label is just a simple label with a common name and the Latin name. And we are marking all of our gardens in Douglas County with these markers. The purpose of a butterfly garden in addition to saving the butterflies is to provide education to the public about what they can plant in their own gardens to help bring the butterflies to them. This particular garden was a garden which was to fulfill the Mayor's Monarch Pledge. Uh, the Mayor's Monarch Pledge was from a number of mayors across the United States who wanted to bring in more monarchs to save the monarchs. And in this garden we have a host plant called Butterfly Weed. That is one of the host plants for the monarch butterfly. The nectar plants in the garden are targeted to all butterflies, not just the monarchs. So you'll see other butterflies visiting this garden also. The garden is a summer garden, essentially. Um, butterflies start coming in May. Some of the um, uh, butterflies migrate. Others are in the ground. They've uh, been in chrysalis throughout the winter, and they'll start coming out in April. First, when flowers are blooming, they must have the flowers blooming in order to do that. And they must have a host plant available because they don't just sip the nectar, they lay eggs. Um, between April and May and November, mid-November is probably the latest time you'll see butterflies in our gardens. We are also having a sign made to remind people that the gardens are essentially closed for migration starting in November. So when you come to a butterfly garden in November, don't expect to see a butterfly. The um, Butterfly Trail actually has a website on Douglas County Happenings, but there's also brochures you can pick up at various sites around Douglasville, naming all 10 gardens on the Douglas County Butterfly Trail. This is the eighth completed garden on the trail. Uh, the ninth completed garden we just completed um, in early June is at the Douglas County History Museum. They have brochures on the trail, plus this is just a nice place to visit in downtown Douglasville. We've got more great news from the Douglas County school system. Approximately 500 students from Douglas County and surrounding counties participated in this year's West Metro Foreign Language Forum held Saturday, May 6th at Douglas County High School. This oral language contest recognizes students for their language proficiency and encourages students and teachers to continue their pursuit of foreign language excellence. These Douglas County High School students are all smiles after winning a superior rating in their foreign language proficiency. Pictured front row left to right are Deborah Song, Uzo Chukka, French teacher Madame Whitney De Brule, Machi Okiki, and Nathaniel Christian. On the back row are Terry Clement, Edgar Romero, and Mofulu Papula. The Douglas County School System consistently looks for real-world opportunities for students to learn in the community. Students in the advanced welding class at the College and Career Institute completed a year-long apprenticeship with Denise Companies in May. Each student spent a full day once a month on the job at Denise assisting with projects. 
The most exciting project involves signage for the new home of the Braves, SunTrust Park. Have you seen the work being done to the old Bleakley building on Fairburn Road? It's getting a facelift and the work is being done by Douglas County government. Joining us in studio to tell us about the project is Director of Development Services, James Worthington. So welcome to the show today. Why don't you introduce yourself to our viewers and let them know who you are and what you do for the county. All right, I'm James Worthington. I'm the Douglas County Development Services Director. I have been with the county for 18 years now. Um, I started off with engineering and I've kind of worked my way up to the director of the development services now. I'm also the county engineer and project manager for several different projects in the county. Okay, so speaking of projects, we have a fairly big project going on in Douglas County right on Furban Road. Why don't you give us a little bit about what's going on there? Sure, that's the, uh, the Bleakley Complex. It's three different buildings. There's a small building on the front, which is property management's new office. They, they moved out of the old courthouse into that building. There's a large building that's up front that will become the tax and tag office on the first floor and appraisal and GIS on the second floor. And then there's an additional building in the rear that will be the fleet offices and fleet uh, shop area. Okay, so what's going on right now? Like what's been done already in the building? So uh, there's three different buildings and they're all th on different phases. So the, f the small building, the property management building, it's complete. We did all of the work in-house using all of the property management employees. Um, it's complete, they're moved in, it's operational. The tax and tag office building is um, being performed by uh, contractor Lichty Construction. Um, they're, they're just starting they think it'll be about an eight month project from this point. Um, and then the rear building, the fleet building, it's kind of a mix. We're doing some of it in-house and some with contractors. They've got some new equipment in, some of it's installed, some of it's not. We've done a lot of renovations to the office, like the flooring, the ceiling, paint, windows, all that stuff's new, and most of that's complete. Okay, so what can Douglas County residents look forward to with this move? How will it make it more efficient for them? Uh, one of the primary um, bonuses of it all is the tax and tag office will be there and we get a lot of complaints from people coming here about parking and parking being so tight and hard to get in and out of. And that'll be, a, they'll have a dedicated parking area right in front of that building. It'll be much closer, much easier to access than it is in here. Um, also, it will free up a lot of space in this building and it should ease the parking congestion in this building when all of those uh, employees and, and citizens go over there. Okay, so if residents have any questions or would like more information on the project, where can they contact you here at the courthouse? So I'm on the first floor in the Development Services Office. Um, they can just come in or they can look me up on the internet, on the website, it's, I'm on there and with all my contact information. Okay, well we look forward to seeing what's going on. Thank you guys for working so hard for Douglas County. Well sure, thank you. Looking for some fun and cheap things to do this summer? Be sure to visit one of our little free libraries. Communications Director Wes Tallon was instrumental in the implementation of the program and here he is to tell us all about them. <music> It's the lazy, crazy days of summer, and what's better to do this summer than to read a good book? But don't have time to go to one of our three wonderful Douglas County libraries? Little free libraries are popping up all over the county. One of them is right here at Deer Lake Park. Little free libraries are neighborhood book exchanges. It's easy, you don't need a library card, you don't need any kind of identification. All you have to do is come open up the door to it and look in there and see if there's a book you would like to read. Take it out, take it home, take it here at the park, sit out and on uh, next to the lake and read the book when you finish it. Either put it back in or if you really like it, you can take it home. If you've got a book at home that you've read 137 times and you want to bring it back for someone else to read, 
donate your own book and bring it in here. We've got them here at Deer Lake Park at Boundary Waters Park at the Multimodal Transportation Center. And there are some other ones that have popped up in other places like the Fair Play Park down off of Highway 166. And we understand that uh, family put one up in Lithia Springs. So we're gonna have all these locations on the county website. So check it out, celebratedouglascounty.com under programs, little free libraries. So read a book this summer. Come on out and grab a book at the Little Free Library. We don't have to remind you that July is a hot month in Georgia. However, we do feel that we need to remind you to look again. Georgia's Bright from the Start program, led by Commissioner Amy Jacobs, along with Governor Nathan Deal and Sandra Deal, joined together to help raise awareness about the dangers of leaving a child unattended in a hot car. Here is a portion of the recent press conference and a public service announcement about Look Again. This summer marks the fifth year we focused on the critical life-threatening danger of leaving children unattended in vehicles. Often when events are held annually and a particular theme is emphasized year after year, the message can become minimized. Perhaps we don't listen as intently as we once did. It's as if we become desensitized thinking that won't happen to me. Well, I submit to you that the advice to look again is as important today in 2017 as ever, be so ever before. Outside of car crashes, vehicular heat stroke is the number one killer of children. Last year here in Georgia, three child deaths occurred because someone did not look again. A 13-month-old boy in Rossville died after being left in an SUV by his grandmother. And in Carrollton, two 15-month-old twin girls left in an SUV by their father. These are the tragedies we are trying to prevent. Well, folks, if you haven't noticed, summer is upon us. Hot weather is here. And Sandra and I, as both parents and grandparents, are very well aware of the dangers that are associated with hot weather, cars, and children being left inside those cars. Just a brief overview of why this is important. I'm told, and I think the statistics bear it out, that uh, children's body temperatures rise about three to five times faster than the body temperatures of adults. So therefore, because an adult does not respond to hot weather or even the temperatures inside of a car, does not mean that a child does not respond even more severely in that regard. So just cracking the window is not sufficient in most cases. Carelessness and neglect can exact very high prices. And we would just simply remind ourselves and everyone else that you need to look again. And when you get to where you're going and you're transporting a child and you need to jump out and go into a business or whatever for even just a short time, well, first of all, Nobody can predict if you're going into a business establishment how long it's going to take you to get back. I think that's a common mistake that people make is, well, I'm only going to be in there a minute or two. Well, you don't know. You don't know how long it's going to take you to find what you're looking for. You don't know how long it's going to take you to check out. And those minutes can be dangerous minutes. So take every precaution to make sure that, uh, that you are dealing with the children's lives in a safe fashion. Well, thank you all so very much for your attention and interest in our children. You know, they are so precious, and especially for those mothers who have carried those babies for nine months, and have that baby be born healthy and safe, and then to lose a child for, for, because of somebody's carelessness, whether it's our own or someone else's, just devastates you. And I've seen marriages break apart as a result of the guilt and the things that happen to people when, when they fail to take those necessary precautions, not on purpose, but just carelessness. And those lives are just too precious. And so we need to drill it into our children, drill it into the caretakers, into our own families, uh, our husbands and and even ourselves, we have to renew this over and over and have reminders. And I would suggest that you put your personal belongings in the back seat behind your seat, your purse, maybe your 
even your cell phone to keep you from being on it during the time that you're driving. Other things that will remind you, a briefcase, so that you have to get it out of the car. It makes you look again. And that's the most important way I think we can save our children. And the other way, of course, is to be vigilant as we see those cars in parking lots and places. I tend not to look inside, but we need to. It's, I don't tend to be nosy about things, but we need to be nosy when it comes to our children. So if you're walking by a car and notice something doesn't seem right, or you see a child that's seeming to struggle, be sure you take the time to call for help because you may be saving that child's life and a family of a lot of grief. And so I would encourage you just to look again. It doesn't take much effort to look again. Children are our greatest resource. That's why we're reminding child care programs and families to always look again. 10 minutes is all it takes for the inside of the vehicle to reach deadly temperatures. So every time you get out of the car, check the front and back and then look again. Make sure the car is locked, even in your driveway or garage. And if you ever see a child left alone in a car, call 911 immediately. We can save lives if we all look, look again. again. Thanks so much for watching DCTV 23. If you need any additional information about what you saw on the show today, all you have to do is go to our website at CelebrateDouglasCounty.com or email us at dctv23.co.douglas.ga.us. Be sure to check out all of our shows here on your source for local news and entertainment. DCTV 23 is always on at Comcast Channel 23, AT&T UVerse Channel 99, and online at dctv23.com. We leave you this month with a look back at the City of Douglasville's July 4th Parade. See you next month.